Hello and welcome back one and all. What you're currently looking at is um, a system you might remember. And if you're new to the channel, it is a X58. Well, actually, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching my video. And secondly, this is an X58 system that I built a little while ago, which is almost an exact replica with some upgrades to a system I used to have. Um, and I quite like the X58 system, so I still have it. Today's adventure is all about the sound card and whether or not it adds performance to your system. Um, there's been a lot of arguments everywhere you look online. Everybody's got their own um, input and opinion about whether or not you need a sound card versus the sound capabilities of our motherboards nowadays. This is not a test about sound quality. This is a test about whether or not offloading the sound um, payload onto a dedicated sound card will free up the CPU to give you more FPS. And I thought, no, what better system do I have to test this out in than the old X58? So before I get to throwing this uh, sound card in there, which by the way is a Asus Zonar DG, it's it's older, um, PCI interface. Um, but this this is a great little sound card, and it makes your headphones sound amazing, uh, simply because it has its own little onboard um, amp, whereas most uh, motherboards and stuff like that don't. But again, this video is not about sound quality. It's just about whether or not adding a sound card can give you even a couple of FPS more on average. Because, you know, every little bit counts. So, um, like I said, before I go throwing that into the system, I did want to make a couple of quality of life improvements to um, the current system. And mainly it's it's this case. And even though the case is awesome, it's a it's a... It's a CM690, the original version um, with just, you know, aluminum or silver insides. There was a CM92, I think, and it had a few upgrades like USB 3 and the insides were black. And then there was like a, a second version of that with clear acrylic side panel. Mine is the original with, you know, a, a, a solid uh, case panel with, a, you know, a couple holes for fans the biggest gripe i have about it is all of this wasted space up here i don't have enough hard driver or cd roms and stuff to fill that in and nobody really needs that anymore nowadays and uh, my biggest pet peeve with with this case is i can't change the cpu cooler easily you have to take all the guts out of the case and take the motherboard out of the case and you know change the back plate and put it all back together whereas most cases nowadays have you know provisions there's a big hole cut in the back of the case uh or the motherboard tray that you can take your cpu cooler on and off through i'm gonna do that real quick swap the case over and um then we'll start testing with the uh sound card so the case i have to replace the cm690 in is this fractal design case that i got um I actually found it at one of my favorite thrift uh, stores for 15 bucks. Can you believe that? Anyways, so like I was saying, um, this has a few uh, quality of life upgrades. Um, you can see through this. Let me get this window out of here so we can do away with the glare. Holy cow. Anyways, there we go. So one of the quality of life um, things that I like most is, of course, I was just talking about it. There is access on the back of the motherboard tray to swap out your CPU, cool, CPU cooler and stuff. I could put a water cooler up there, which actually I probably am not going to put it in the front. Maybe I'll hang it from the top. Um, if I ever do want to put one in there, uh, cause you know, air bubbles, highest point and everything. And um, yeah, I, I just think that this is going to be a, a, a better suit uh, suitor for it. Um, Especially because I want to be in and out of it all the time, so this will make things a little easier. So I'm gonna go give this thing a quick dusting. Um, probably not gonna go into a deep clean. I'll just I'll just wipe it out with a rag and make it presentable looking, and then I'll throw the guts in there and we can start our tests. Cleaned out, fans put where they need to go. New fan put in here. Move the hard drive cage over. Ready for guts. Put your I/O shield in and don't forget it. Motherboard in. Power supply in video cards in installed the other pci cards and yes i had to move the graphics cards down 
All right, so I need to plug in my front panel, you know, power reset and all that. And there's not, uh, there's no room to do such a task because the graphics card is in the way. And um, I, it's getting late. I will pick this up in the morning because I'm getting tired. See you in the morning. All right, everybody. Good morning to you. Let us tackle that little issue where we can't reach the plugs behind the graphics card now that we are fully slept and fed and ready to go. I know I've said this before and um, I'm going to say it again. This little guy here that you can plug all of your front panel into and then plug into your motherboard as one big bulk, bulk connector. This is a fantastic idea. I don't know why motherboard manufacturers don't do it. I mean... What is this going to add to the total cost of the bill or the motherboard? Like what? 30 cents? I'll pay that. I'll pay that every time I buy a motherboard. No problem. And the rest is done. That was pretty quick and painless. Um, <laughs> I have removed the sound card from it because we're going to do our tests, you know, pre sound card to get our baseline. And then we'll put that in there and see if anything changes. This has always just been kind of like a curiosity to me. And every time you Google it, you get um, you get some conflicting information. A lot more of the information says that it does nothing, um, especially for newer systems. But they're always talking about um, much newer systems. So this being X58, less uh, powerful CPU. Um, I believe it's some uh, the what's in here, the X5650. Uh, I think that turbo's up to just under three gigahertz, so it does, doesn't even break the three gigahertz barrier. So, um, if I find that there's good results with this, I'd, I'd kind of like to try in a more modern system. And really, the only more modern modern system I own is um, my Ryzen 5 3600X. So we'll give it a try. Um, unfortunately, my Ryzen system doesn't have a PCI slot; it's all PCI Express slot. So I would have to get a different sound card for that, but. Not like that would be a big deal. Anyways, uh, let's do it. Let's test this. Okay, so I think the way I'm gonna test sound card versus onboard is I'm gonna do three tests. One, I'm gonna do Cinebench, and while Cinebench is running, I'm gonna have this um, Passmark sound check generate white noise. Um, and I think the randomness of that is really gonna mimic kind of like a game playing and, and playing, you know, dynamic sounds. Um, and I'm going to have that running in the background while I'm running Cinebench, both with and without a, a sound card. And hopefully there will be a discernible um, difference <laughs> in our scores. Um, and then I'm going to run Heaven Benchmark, and I'm not going to run the Passmark with it because Heaven has its own sound that plays. And then I'm gonna run, I think, Grand Theft Auto V. And my, my rationale behind this is that Cinebench is gonna use all CPU, and then Heaven Benchmark is gonna use all GPU, and then Grand Theft Auto is gonna both use GPU and CPU. And we'll get a, 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 a I feel like it's a nice gambit of tests, and it's gonna give us um, at least a glimpse uh, to make this more defined on whether or not a sound card would help your FPS, you'd have to probably test it with like way more games and, and applications. But um, this will be just a quick, um, does my idea hold water that a sound card would help your frame rate in a very small way. So the cool thing about this program here is it shows you what the CPU load is. Um, this up here, the CPU load, I think that's the CPU load on the entire system. And average CPU load is what this is adding to the overall CPU load. I could be way wrong. I don't know. Um, but it is generating uh, some white noise. And that's very random. So let's give it a go with this. And this is the test with onboard audio.
Okay, well that will do it for testing and for the most part, all of our results are, I would say there's no change. Um, yeah, the numbers are a tiny, tiny bit higher for the Cinebench R15 and the Heaven benchmarks um, for the dedicated sound card. But I'm gonna just chalk that up to, you know, your 2% margin of error. Um, the own, I mean, 65 or 655.6 versus 655 on Cinebench R15 is, is not an improvement. Like I said, that is, that's more your, your margin of error. And um, Heaven's score of, what was it? Oh, the max FPS was one, on average, 127.1 for the max FPS and versus 126.8. Again, that's, I don't even think that's 2%. That's probably like 0.2%. So really, I'm gonna say that those are even and, and there's no change there. However, in Grand Theft Auto V, I did notice a repeatable um, increase on just the 0.1% lows. Um, the onboard graphics, sorry, the onboard audio had an average FPS of 36 in the 0.1% lows and an average of 41 frames per second in the 0.1% lows, which that's pretty huge. I mean, it's only, what, five FPS, but your 0.1% are where you're gonna notice um, hiccups and changes in frame rate. And the higher, of course, the higher FPS you have, the better, but the higher 0.1% lows you have, the better because it, it makes for a smoother, more enjoyable game. That was a, a, an improvement. Absolutely, it was quantifiable. You, it, every test that I did, um, like I said, I, I ran each thing three times and those are my average scores. And we ended up with a much better 0.1%. Um, so is it worth it um, to install a graphic or, or to install a sound card into your computer for um, this small use case scenario? Hmm, probably not. And. Considering this is, you know, it's X58, it's, we're not on a modern uh, platform. If you had, even on a low end, like a 12th gen, you know, i3 or, or um, Ryzen 3 or 5, you're probably not gonna notice any kind of uh, improvements with the sound card. But that, I don't know, your mileage may vary. All I can vouch for is what's sitting here in front of us. And in GTA, we did get FPS uh, boost on the 0.1% lows of five FPS higher. So take that for what it's worth. This isn't a very scientific <laughs> um, testing method, but I kind of had fun and I hope you did too. So if you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, why not uh, subscribe? And I'll try to get more interesting like uh, tests like this in the future. Um, but other than that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.